freedom machines, hey? 100% freedom machine. Yeah, if you Google Perth, it comes up as one of the most remote cities on Earth. We're a long way from anywhere down under. I live 250 k's further south of uh, that city, and I'm about to head another 200 odd k's deeper south, basically to the bottom of the world, uh, and find a place to camp on the beach. It's the middle of summer, it's hot, I'm fully loaded, so I'm about to put the dark horse to the proper test. See how all the little upgrades handle actual adventure riding. Uh, it's not going to be easy. Where I'm going is going to be a lot of sand. So um, I'm just going to cruise, get through it, and see what unfolds. Love this feeling. Pretty awesome. But always feel a little tight a little cautious, a little unfamiliar with the bike when it's fully loaded. I just like to get onto the dirt, slide around, hit a few bumps, shake it up a bit, just really get in, in the zone with it, and then you're pretty much set for the journey. Here we go. Let's feel her out off-road. Yeah, definitely got some weight on board. Suspension's good, really good. Like it's firm, but normally loaded up on gravel like this, potholes and you name it, it'll be squirming around a bit. But front end feels planted, direct. Pretty epic bit of trail. A lot of bugs, a lot of creatures. Some animal tracks in here, kangaroos mainly. In my previous videos in Europe, I wore a lot of heat for being such a sook about the bears and the wolves and, you know, it's just what you're used to. I mean, here we've got, I think, five or six at least of the, the top ten deadliest snakes in the world. And they're here. They're like in this bush but anyway I'm familiar with snakes if you like and the movements even crocodiles and the areas that they dwell but bears and wolves totally out of my territory here we go it's behaving nice really nice you know, I got a bit of weight on the back and it, you can really feel it when the sand grabs the front, the effect it has on the back, it just got to power out of it and with power, it does all the right things. With the sand, you have to hold like a reasonable pace to stay on top of it. Um, Basically, you can't go too cautiously because you'll be fighting the bike. You sort of got to get to that ideal speed, especially like long boggy sections like this. I mean, I'm used to sand and you just got to react with power. It's the only way through it. This is going to be a workout the next few days, let me tell you. With these big adventure bikes, You've just got to treat them like a big dirt bike. And by that I mean, you know, apply all the same techniques. Standing up, leaning over the front, creeping back, weighting the bike. Uh, and providing they're set up well, they'll respond and act like a big dirt bike. Okay. I can see the ocean. It's going to take a bit of commitment now. Let's go. Up to speed. Beautiful. 
Western Australia. Okay, we'll take this track through here. This looks like as good a campsite as any. What do you reckon? Huh? Man, that sand was deep. UV's pretty harsh in WA, so um, I'm going to stay covered up for a couple more hours yet, I reckon. Before I hit the ocean, that is. But um, this is what I love about Australia, Western Australia in particular. You can just find your own patch of coastline, your own patch of beach, and not worry about being shoulder to shoulder with everyone. This is why I live in one of the most remote places on earth. For this, just to be here alone I'm ready this is home for the night T7's parked up sitting pretty look at that contrast of West Aussie gravel and sand and then the hotel five star a star hotel Better send a location to the missus. Let's see what happens. Sent. I'm stopping here. Now, that should have sent my exact location, like within a three meter radius of where I am. Just on the edge of Australia. The dark horse is pretty bloody good. Big bike, carrying a bit of stuff, carrying me through, you know, it's pretty serious sand and it's gonna get worse tomorrow. So um, I'm really happy with how it's tracking. You know, just got the power to just pop up and sit up on top of the sand. The chassis is good, the balance is perfect. It's a very predictable and it all comes down to that suspension balance getting it sprung so it can sit at the right ride height with all this weight on it and you put it on all these different surfaces boggy beach sand included and the thing is great sure you've got to have a lot of technique in sand and experience um, but if you've got the experience this thing just eats it up a uh, little concerned I've sucked a bit of juice. Um, I think I'm down a bit on fuel. Based on what I have to do tomorrow, or, or what I want to do tomorrow. But, we will just press on into the south coast wilderness.
let the old girl warm up a touch. That was a good night. That was a good place to be. Right, yeah, well that's that then. Remember, take all your rubbish with you and always start in second gear in the sand. Let's go. Freedom machines, hey? 100% freedom machine. Yeah, I gotta riding this sand has used up more fuel than I expected. So I'm not gonna be able to go deep into the wilderness like I wanted to. Because I already am deep into the wilderness and I don't even know if I'm gonna make it through on this fuel. Anyway. Or downhill into the sand. She's deep, she's deep. The ruts, you just don't want to get cross rutted. Too busy looking at the nav, nearly went off the track. Shit. Okay, straight ahead and left here. Right, that's enough drone flying for one minute to concentrate on what I'm doing here. Okay, right hander. But first, nice little water crossing. Listen to that big girl rumble through that water. It was reasonably deep too, you know. Just dominating the sand, the Dark Horse 2.0. Right, I've got to somehow ride in fuel conservation mode, which means in the sand, pulling a higher gear, getting up on top of it and trying not to back off. That's it. It's a reasonably good flow. Okay, good pace, just got to watch these blind corners. That's the thing with sand, the faster you go, the smoother and more stable your bike becomes, but if it goes ugly, it's real ugly. You got a lot more momentum to wash off, but um, no, this thing's tracking good. It all just comes down to the chassis geometry. Oh, they've got it right. Back on some harder packed sand now. This is helping my cause, helping the fuel economy. Can carry a bit more speed with less load on the motor. And just like that, commuting through the wilderness as opposed to wrestling a 200 plus kilo twin cylinder through the beach sand. That's one of life's greatest lessons right there. It's good to switch the aircon on. I worked up quite a sweat in the sand and now this open road is just flushing me out. I would have liked to have uh, pressed on further in that rugged coastline and you know what I could have if I brought my fuel bladder I'm always forgetting something I do have the tyre levers this time last time in the Balkans in Europe well you know what happened there anyway this time I got my tyre levers
pit stop just to put the earplugs in. Um, I'm a little more relaxed now. What's interesting with this bike is that it's got this eco mode that comes up. So top, you know, six gear sitting on 110, 120, and it's just eating up the K's, you know, good economy. Um, third gear at quarter to half throttle to full throttle sometimes in that sand, man, it was just flicking bars off the fuel gauge every couple of kilometers and it, that freaked me out. Um, amazing the power, the, you know, the cost of, of power. Uh, yeah, you just, the, the load pushing this much weight through that sand, you underestimate how demanding it is on the motor and it sucks the fuel down. I'm glad I made that call. The problem with those tracks in there, you can be in there for hours just wah through the sand. And um, yeah, even if you run out of fuel like 10Ks before where you need to be or 2Ks, you are not pushing this bike through that sand. You are stopped. Thanks, mate. Oops. Loving the A Stars jacket. It's got the built in camelback. Don't even need to, you know, my, my backpack's got camera gear and stuff in it, so this is ideal. I can separate it, just keep the fluid in the jacket itself. Morning. Good morning. Saying How will I recognise him? Yeah, Richie's one. <laughs> Richie, yeah. nice to meet you. Hi, I'm Adam. Yeah. So you been you're up coming on a 690. Morning. Yeah, I have. Just bailed out of there. You're going to be my guide to where we yeah, can I meet Langy. Yeah, a bit huh? more interesting what the GPS will tell you. <laughs> KLR 650, fully loaded. He ain't hitting the sand. Okay, so this is Richie. I've never actually met this guy, but my mate Langy from uh, Denmark has sent him to come and collect me and um, get me through to another location. You can't beat these experiences. There's our mate on the KLR checking into the motel. Woohoo! <laughs> Straight into it. She's on. Finally sucking a bit of dust. This is going to test the air filter. Local knowledge. Listen to the twin. You don't be twins for hill climbing. Langy. <laughs> How much does the guide cost me? <laughs> no, he's not cheap. Mate. Not cheap. Well, you, can, you can take him from here. <laughs> <laughs> so incidentally, Langy is the father of the twins, Morgan and Nate, who I've shot a number of videos with. The first, when I met them on their farm. Okay, what do we got here? 
Wet spot, wet spot. So far, so good. And a um, bit of an overdue catch up for a beer with Langy too. Oh, first hit of the bash plate. I felt that. <laughs> if you just pull the front wheel front wheel draw up just like that oh did I spray you okay Here we are, back to the coast. You just can't beat it, can you? This is Langy's playground, born and raised. Wow, you wouldn't want to lose your brakes off there. Pretty happy with my GPS bracket. This is the final stage of testing, by the way. Before I put it into production, just want to give a quick shout out to all the people who have pre, the pre-sales. Oh, I think we're turning. What do we got? What do we got? We're going wide. Whoa, that's steep. This is an adventure trail. Oh, clip the handguard. Listen to that twin just bellowing with the acro. So sick. That was hard work today. I knew it was going to be hard work today in that sand far out. But it's time for a beer, catch up beer with me, mate. Oh. She's fairly chockers. Give that a bit of a clean before I uh, pull it out. Oh, of course it's a bush chook. Cheers, Cheers, mate. Look at my face. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> and normally that's me. I knew the filter was going to be clogged. This is what what matters. Squeak clean on the inside, but. The one problem I have with the T7 is this. It's two 350cc singles sharing that. Never pass up the opportunity for someone else to wash your <laughs> air filter. Thanks, Langy. I didn't expect you to do it, no. but you the, know. The way you hesitated, I. 
you thought you'd just oh, put your gloves yeah, on and someone, get into someone it. Had to do it. Someone <laughs> had to do it. Someone had to do it. So, unfortunately, today I've got to cut my plans short and head home because my place and all the surrounding farms are under bushfire attack. So far, my house seems okay, but um, I'm keen to get back there to do what I can to protect it. If they'll even let me get back in, all the roads are blocked. Hey mate, How are you? I'm off uh, road about 3 k's down here, I've just ridden 400 k's to get home. Okay. I've got some animals to move, is it yep. pretty secure now or what's uh, happening? Uh, give me two seconds. <laughs> yeah. 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 So yeah, so. If I can go through that would be great. Yeah, no Alright, cheers yeah, mate. Stay safe, eh? Will do. to get a bit smoky that's the bush out the back of my place up there thankfully my place is unscathed oh, there's still smoke in the air there's cops everywhere there's fire units all around so it's still action stations but um yeah it just feels good to be home to do what i can to look after the place anyway that's a wrap on that little adventure and as for the dark horse wow Proper adventure beast, this thing. It's it's ready to just go across Australia. Sure, I could um, bump up the fuel range a touch with bladders, uh, but otherwise, just the overall package, it's mint. Um, I fairly cooked it on the way back here on the highway, hot highway, and these, these Pirelli Scorpion rallies are really impressing me overall for everything, for sand, for hard packed gravel in the forests yesterday with the boys. Um, you saw how it went on the beach in the, the sandy tracks. And even the road going capabilities are, are good enough. And if anything, put a bit of a square edge back on the, um, the rear, you know, just getting those road miles in. Oh, really stoked with the, the GPS bracket. It's ready to press play on production. My mate should be back from holidays um in a few days so i'll be able to get into the metal fab shop with him and press play and send all the orders out to you guys that um pre-ordered one um, yeah can't wait for you guys to get your own and fit it to your own, own bikes i'll piece together an instructional video on how to mount it uh it's a little bit tricky as you know with anything to do with these t7s you've got to undo all this stuff to get to anything but it's just that the nature of these road bike style adventure bikes uh, with the fairings and everything. No, it's chic, it's compact, it's stable, um, very practical product, I'm happy with it. Uh, anyway, that's a wrap. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel, all that stuff, you know the drill. And um, yeah, the old war horse isn't too far away, should be a couple of weeks and it'll be here, but in the meantime, I've got the Tenere T7 to, um, to play with and keep the adventures rolling. Cheers.